Hi and welcome back. In this video, I'm going to show you a feature of Waveform 11 called the Quick Actions Panel. Sometimes it's called the Quick Actions Bar, and there's another one called the Quick Actions Window. The first thing I'm going to do is point out that at the bottom on the Compact Toolbar, there is a launcher for the Quick Actions Window. When I click that, then we get this, which shows a bunch of kind of large buttons that you can use to, basically you can use them as shortcuts. And these are some that come with the program. And if you click this plus out here, you can add more of these to this window. And let's take a look at the panels and tracks. These are pre-configured templates that give you some buttons that you can use to launch actions or macros, kind of like keyboard shortcuts, but with a quick way to touch them. So if you have a touchscreen computer, there is a way to set up an iPad to use this. If you're on a Mac, you can also click this to make these buttons a little bit larger to make them a little bit more touchscreen friendly. You can see I can kind of resize this and get a nice big view. The other thing you can do is put the mixer on this quick actions window. So that's the quick actions window. The majority of this video though is about the quick actions bar. It uses the same templates like, like these, but it resides right above the toolbar area. And I'm gonna show you how to call that up. So we go up to the user interface explorer area up here, this I, and you click that and this shows all the different aspects of the waveform user interface. And the thing we've got right here, you'll see in the rollover, it says show hide the quick actions panel. I've noticed in some of the videos from traction that says called the quick actions bar. So I guess it's the quick actions bar or panel. So if I click that, you'll see it reveals one of these templates and the buttons right along the bottom edge. And in working with this, I found it can be actually kind of useful. This opens and closes the browser. This closes or opens the properties. Right now I have the compact toolbar. If I had the full properties panel loaded, then this opens and closes properties. So I'm gonna go back to the normal toolbar. The plugin, the mixer, MIDI, the overview, which is another new feature, you can open and close that. So that's just sort of an example. If we look at the one labeled tracks, allows you to control the configuration of the various global tracks at the top. Like right now we have the tempo and the marker tracks revealed but if I click this, the arranger track shows up or I can open or close the chord track. Now where this gets more powerful is where you create your own panel. Like I started one here called My View and I've used it to set the loop range. If you've watched some of the recent videos, I've talked a lot about the range commands. So if I hold Shift and Option and drag a range and then I click this, it sets the loop or the in marker and the out marker over that range. So I created a button for that. I'm gonna create some other buttons on here as well. So the next one I'm going to add is essentially the escape key, which clears the selection. So to program one of these, you right click it, then you can assign the action. You can use either macros or the standard keyboard shortcuts. I go to editing, and then deselect all. I could assign this a color. So I'll just choose a color that I like, and then I can assign it a name. I'm going to add escape to this. So now I can remember that escape is deselect. So an idea I had on the way to use this quick actions bar is to put in a cheat sheet for all of the function keys. And so that is what I'm going to do. So the next one I'm going to add is F1. Now to figure out what the function keys do, you go to the settings tab, keyboard shortcuts. So in the list of shortcuts here, 
go to the area where it says press keyboard to filter, I'm gonna press F1 and under the help section, I've got show pop-up help at mouse pointer. So that's what that one does. So I'm going to assign that and just shorten it up and call it help. So if I right click on my new button and rename it, I'm going to also put in F1. And I'll assign it a color. Make it a slightly different color than my other one. And then assign the action. Standard shortcuts, help. And I want this one here, which is F1, show pop-up help at mouse pointer. Now the way this shortcut normally works, if I hit F1, it will open this pop-up help. But I can't do that while hitting that button. Maybe I could if I had it on another touch screen. So I'm going to change this and have it the action be to under help to just show help. So then if I click that, it opens the waveform user guide. So let's see what the next one is. Go back over here, I'll hit F2, and this is going to the settings tab. So I'll just call that settings tab. We'll add another one, right click, we'll rename it, put in F, to, and I'll just call it settings. I think that's good enough. Give it the same color. We'll create a little section here of these. So then I'll assign it to an action, assign action, standard shortcuts, under application, go to settings tab, F2. So that's now my F2. If I press this button, flips me over to the settings tab. So I'm gonna take a few minutes to program these in. All right, so I've completed my toolbar. At any point, you can rename these things. So if you wanted to say, take escape and make it say deselect all. It makes it into a two line. So you could do some of these, like maybe if I added tab to this one. So I'll rename this to settings tab, which gives me a two line. Maybe if I rename this to projects tab, it will go to two lines. So you could kind of play around with this until you get the look that you like. You can also drag these around, like I have my original set loop range here. I can drag that and then put that at the end, for example. And there's nothing to say you have to actually fill these all in. You could add an empty one and give it a simple name, like just, we'll just call it asterisk or something like that and then use that as a separator between different sections on here. Maybe dash would make for a better separator. So you can add something like that in there to make a separator. By putting these in, not only have I programmed and gotten more familiar with what's on the function keys, but now I have a quick reference, especially if I'm in and recording a video and I'm trying to remember what the function keys are. Instead of having like a paper reference, I can now that I've done this one time, I can go into my view and I have all the function keys here. I'm not entirely sure if there's a way to rename views at this point, but if you're in the situation where you don't want my view, but you wanted to change the name, just right click on there, duplicate it. At the point you duplicate it, you can give it a name. And I just wanna call it function keys. So now if I go to function keys and then the original one, right click and then I can delete that one. Then if I go back to the window version of it, I'll close the mixer here, then I can add my new one to this list by just selecting function keys. And I've got my function key reference, which I can put that here. The interesting thing about the window version of this is that it will stay on the screen 
even as you're clicking other things on the screen. So it works as a kind of floating palette. And you can make that into a nice big reference for your function keys. It's just one way to use the Quick Actions panel and the Quick Actions window. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you in another video very soon.